Today I'm in Ben Gurion University in Beersheba and it's a little emotional for me because this is where I studied abroad ooh, 14 years ago now, which is a long time it feels like. And I'm here for work actually to explore a little bit of the campus and how it's changed since I was here. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what it's like. Ben Gurion University is the major university in the south. It is one of the few universities in Israel that has a American college campus feel where it has dorms that kids live in. Typically in Israel, dorms are, are less uh, for the students because students tend to be older in Israel. You, there is a conscription in the army, which means that most people are in the army from the age of 18 till 21 or 22, which means that most kids don't start college until 22 or 23. Uh, which means most of them have already started with their lives, they have families, or they don't really want to live in dorms. So it's much less common, but here on Ben Gordon University, there actually are, you know, there actually is more of a campus life. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what it's like, and you can see. This is November. It's about 85 degrees out. And it's a beautiful campus. Ben-Gurion University is smack in the heart of the city. It has one of the more diverse populations for universities. There are a lot of Bedouin who study here because many of the Bedouin, Bedouin communities are in the south, not far from here. And there is Americans who are here either with the study abroad program, which I did, or who are here. There's also a Columbia exchange program for doctors who come and study about international medicine. So it is quite a diverse population. So Ben Gurion University has about 20,000 students in all sorts of departments, in history where I studied, in robotics, in math, in sciences, um, and part of what I got to do today was see some of these departments and experience what they do. So we got to see uh, the social outreach program and the social work program, uh, which works in the community. Beersheba happens to be a relatively poor community historically. And so the university has been working on try to bring the benefits of the university to the surrounding population, which was interesting. That was part of that clip you just saw uh, in that room. And then after that, we got to something really cool in the robotics lab, which was a uh, robot driving a car and then an underwater, um, it wasn't artificial intelligence. He kept saying it wasn't artificial intelligence because it wasn't, it didn't think on its own. Um, but a robot that helps in archaeology underwater, um, in uh, rescue searches underwater, in uh, a lot in the south of Israel when they are trying to, you know, explore the reefs. And so it was cool to see all that. Um, we also got the chance to talk to a woman who works with drones and human interaction. So not just drones, but how humans interact with them and how we can make drones more friendly and in the future, if we can use them in the desert, let's say, when people are lost and, you know, for someone who leads programs, that's a really interesting concept. So there's a lot going on and here are just some clips of some of the things we saw. So all in all, it was a really interesting day and I was really happy to be back in Ben Gurion University in Beersheba. I hope if you ever get the chance to come down here, if you are in to academics at all or even not, it's a pretty cool campus to see in the middle of the desert. It was named after Ben Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, who had this dream that the Negev would become the future, that out of the desert Israel would bloom. And it's pretty amazing that in the middle of the desert they've created the center of science and technology and history and education. 
Uh, and I, you know, studied abroad there and my husband uh, learned there and then went to a graduate school not far from there. And so it's really cool to see how much it's been growing even in the years since I've been there. So I encourage you to go check it out if you ever get a chance. As always, you can subscribe, ask any questions you have if you ever want to come to Beresheva, and we'll see you soon.